Welcome to WWDC. And TVOS is just one of the software platforms that we're here to talk about today. So let's get going. You sit down and to watch TV, you want to see the shows that you love. So we're introducing multi-user support for TVOS. <laughs> Everyone in the home gets their own personalized music experience you're going to be able to see lyrics to your favorite songs in sync with the music. This is really cool. Oceanhorn 2, of course, is even better with great game controllers. So we're extending support to two of the best and most popular game controllers available. Xbox One S. Yes. And PlayStation DualShock 4. Finally, let's talk about our beautiful screensavers. This year, we're going under the sea. Oh, it's awesome. We've, we've partnered with BBC Natural History Unit to shoot beautiful 4K HDR footage, taking you to places that few people have ever experienced before. Now let's talk about Apple Watch. To tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Kevin Lynch to the stage. Kevin? Now these are something you interact with most every day, and we have more watch faces this year since the very first Apple Watch. Let's take a look at a few of these. First we have the gradient face, which is smoothly animating with the time. And then we have this large numerals face showing the current hour in multiple languages. And the very modern digital face showing you a great look in multiple colors. And then the California dial, classic design for a watch face. Now many of these faces you can add more information to, such as adding rich complications here right on the California dial. And then we have the solar face. This visualizes the sun's 24 hour path around the dial. And you can see it changing during the day or as you rotate the digital crown. Now across all the watch faces, we're introducing taptic chimes. And when enabled, on the hour, you'll feel a silent taptic on your wrist, and if sound is on, you'll hear an audible chime, like this. First, we're bringing more Apple apps to watch. The new audiobooks app to let you listen to Apple books, and voice memos so you can easily record your thoughts, and calculator. And we're now making it possible to create apps that run independently on the watch, no longer requiring a companion iPhone app. Now, to make it even easier for you to discover these apps, we're excited to bring the App Store to Apple Watch. You can browse apps curated by our editorial team or find favorite apps like Headspace or Carrot Weather or Streaks, Nike Run Club. You can search the full App Store using dictation or scribble or just asking Siri. And you can view product pages to see information like the app description, reviews, screenshots. And finally, you can purchase and install an app directly on your watch. Apple Watch is an amazing health and fitness partner. And in watchOS 6, we're adding even more features to empower you to better manage your health, starting with activity. So in watchOS 6, we're introducing Activity trends. For nine key metrics, it'll compare your progress over the last 90 days with the last 365. If the trends show that you're maintaining or improving, you'll see an arrow pointing up, and that's great. Keep doing what you're doing. But if you're trending downward, we'll give you some simple coaching to get you back on track. You'll see trends for familiar metrics like move, exercise, and stand, but you'll also see trends for some new metrics like your workout walking pace, flights of stairs climbed, or even your cardio fitness level. Now, let's talk about your hearing health. And since hearing loss is often so gradual, it's important to know when the sounds around you are loud enough to impact your hearing. The Neo Noise app uses a microphone to detect decibel levels and can notify you if it's reached a level that could impact your hearing over time. If you tap the Noise app, you'll get more detail, and you can use the complication to check, which is to raise or rest. 
It's an easy way to protect your hearing health. Now there's one more new feature in health and fitness, and all the women out there pay close attention because this one's for you, cycle tracking. So in watchOS 6, the cycle tracking app gives you a simple, discreet way to visualize your cycle right on your wrist. You can log key aspects of your period and fertility, including symptoms, and you can be notified when it's about to begin. In the new summary view, you can see health-related notifications. You'll see your favorites, the information you care about most, as well as automatically generated highlights so you can see your health data over time. For example, if you're more active than you usually are, how consistently you may have been mindful this week, or how your heart rate recovered after a recent workout. Health is using machine learning on your iPhone to determine which highlights might be most interesting to you. I've been loving watchOS 6, and I'm super excited to have the opportunity to show it to you today. Let's start with a few of my favorite faces. This is the new modular compact face, and now I can have a large infograph complication alongside a beautiful dial. And there's even room in the corner for a couple of my favorite rich complications like these two new ones, wind and rain. This is the new noise complication, which tells me how loud it is in here. It's pretty quiet. Let's make some noise and see how this works. And we're introducing today some new summer colors and an all new Pride Edition watch band. Now let's talk about iOS, the world's most powerful mobile operating system. Yes, it's iOS 13. Now, this year, we work top to bottom in the system, making everything faster that you do the most. Things like unlocking with Face ID, now 30% faster. When this rolls out in the fall with iOS 13, you'll see that your downloads are now 50% smaller and updates 60% smaller. But what's really incredible is the effect it has on app launch speed. It's up to twice as fast in iOS 13. We are bringing dark mode to iOS. Now, here it is in its traditional light appearance, this gorgeous new wallpaper. But now, let's begin our descent into darkness. Look at that, the gorgeous dark wallpaper. Our notifications look great. Let's take a look at our widgets. They look just awesome. Let's take a look at some apps. We'll start with news. Check it out with a gorgeous dark appearance. So nice. And of course the keyboard, an extra refined new dark appearance and some new tricks because now when you type, you can swipe. Let's start with Safari, Mail, and Notes. Now, Safari has new options to quickly change text sizing and as per website preferences. Mail gets desktop class text formatting controls, including support for rich fonts. And Notes gets this beautiful new gallery view, support for shared folders, and much more. But where we really went deep is with reminders. We've completely reinvented the app, rewriting it from the ground up to make it more intelligent, intuitive, and powerful, and easier than ever to create reminders. So for instance, just type what you want and reminders will understand when and where to notify you. Or you can use the new quick type bar, just tap and enter things like location or even attachments like photos. With tasks, you can now associate to-dos with a top level reminder. Now, smart lists, they help you keep track of your most important items. And if you tag a person in a reminder, well, next time you're in a messages conversation, you'll automatically get a notification letting them know that now is time to talk. It's really handy. Next, Maps. Maps is with you everywhere you are, from work, home, or even on the go with CarPlay. Here's our old map, and here, is the new map. Now, we expect to roll out this map across the entire US by the end of this year and select other countries next year. As Craig said, we've been driving and flying all across the United States, collecting land and aerial data to add significant new detail to the map. You'll notice in the upper right-hand corner 
there is a new binoculars button. When I tap that, I get a brand new look around window. With look around, I get a gorgeous, high definition 3D view. It's an awesome way to explore. But what's most important is that Maps have been, has been designed to be private and secure. We've all seen buttons like this, asking us to use a social account login to get a more personalized experience with an app. And these logins can be used to track you. So we wanted to solve this, and many developers do too. And so now we have the solution. It's called Sign In with Apple. A simple API allows a developer to put a Sign In with Apple button right in their app. You just tap it, and you're authenticated with Face ID on your device, logged in with a new account without revealing any new personal information. You can choose to share your actual email address, or you can choose to hide it. And when you do, we'll create a unique random address that forwards to your real address. <laughs> Next, I want to return, return to HomeKit. Most home cameras today send people's video up to the cloud so it can be analyzed to tell the difference between maybe a leaf blowing in the wind and someone at your door. But unfortunately, this risks your privacy. We have a new way. It's called HomeKit Secure Video. Now, yes, HomeKit Secure Video, in that case, the video is analyzed in your home, on your resident iPad, HomePod, or Apple TV. And then it's encrypted and securely sent to iCloud where no one, not even Apple, can see it. And so we're bringing HomeKit to routers. Now, with HomeKit at the router, we'll automatically firewall off each of your accessories. So even if one were to be compromised, it wouldn't be able to access your other devices or compromise your personal information. Next, I want to turn to camera and photos, where we've given you great new ways to capture, edit, and experience your photos. Because in iOS 13, we're taking portrait lighting to a new level. And it starts with a brand new effect we call high-key mono. We're also extending portrait lighting so you can adjust the intensity of the lighting effect just like you could in a lighting studio by moving the lights closer or further away from your subject. So when you increase the intensity of the light, it's like virtually moving the light closer. This has the effect of smoothing skin, brightening eyes and facial features, or you can pull it back for a subtle, more refined look. And then next, I want to turn to photo editing. You can see at a glance all your settings, and with just a tap and a drag, you can make adjustments. It applies across all of our existing effects and many more that are new to iOS 13. But what's really cool is we're bringing all of this to video for the first time. So now, for the first time, you can rotate a video. How about it? You can apply filters and all of these effects. It's just awesome. But you know, our biggest change this year is in the way you can browse and experience your photos. So now, we're using advanced machine learning to remove duplicates and clutter and let you focus on your best shots. So here we are in all photos. It's got a new home right here in the Photos tab. But we've also given you more control over how you can view all your photos. You can simply pinch, to zoom out and see a bunch of photos, or you can zoom in to see more detail. Oftentimes, my best shots get lost in this sea of images. That's what Days is for. I just tap down here at the bottom, and you can see Days is absolutely beautiful. The clutter of the similar photos is gone. I can just scroll and enjoy now. So let's check out months. I just tap, and even moving between views is beautiful. So let's head over to years. So Years gives me a high-level overview of my library. What makes Years really special is that it's dynamic, based on my context. So today is DubDub, -Dub, and Photos knows I go to DubDub -Dub every year. So now, it's showing me all of my DubDubs -Dubs from the past. Let's get started with AirPods, where we have a couple of great new features coming to iOS 13. First, when you're wearing AirPods, Siri will now be able to read your incoming messages to you as soon as they arrive, and you can instantly respond. Let's take a quick peek and see how it works. 
Amy said, can you meet for coffee at 9 a.m.? Tell her I'll be there. It's sent. We have all had a time where we wanted to share a movie or a song with a friend. Now you can with just a tap. To make that transition seamless, we are bringing Handoff to HomePod. Now when you walk through the door, just bring your iPhone close to your HomePod to instantly hand off your music, a podcast, or even a phone call. And you can just take it with you when you leave the exact same way. Let's shift gears to CarPlay, where you can now have your music next to your maps and you still have room for Siri smart suggestions, like a garage door opener when you get close to home, or a view of your next calendar event. You can see your whole day in the new calendar app. Music has been redesigned, so your album art is front and center and beautiful. Siri stays out of the way, so you don't lose sight of what's on the display. When we first started with Siri's voice, we used short clips of audio from actor recordings. So this year, we have taken a huge step forward using cutting edge machine learning called neural text to speech. Let's have a listen together starting with iOS 12. Absolute zero is the lowest limit of the thermodynamic temperature scale, a state at which the enthalpy and entropy of a cooled ideal gas reach their minimum value, taken as zero. Absolute zero is the lowest limit of the thermodynamic temperature scale, a state at which the enthalpy and entropy of a cooled ideal gas reach their minimum value, taken as zero. That's right. We're calling it iPad OS, and I'd like to give you a first look. So watch what happens when I swipe over. I can now pin my widgets right on my home screen. Let's just slide over from the right-hand side of the screen. You can see I have messages there right now. Now I can, of course, change the app I have and slide over. I can just pick up reminders and uh, drag it on over. Now I have reminders and slide over. So next time I slide out, of course, there's reminders. But what if I want to get back to that last app? Could we make that super easy? The answer is yes. I can just drag from the bottom and they fan out just like that. I have a single note right here in notes, but what if I want to have two notes side by side? Well, now I can. I can tap, drag, and now I have a split with two notes. Now that I have notes in all these different spaces, well, you can guess how I can find them, right? I just bring up the dock, tap on notes, and we have app expose now on iPad. Here are all my note spaces in one place. That's right, you can now plug in a thumb drive. But now this one's really great too. Sometimes when you're working with a camera, you'd like to import directly into an app like Lightroom, and now you can. You want to copy or cut? Just a three finger pinch to copy. A three finger spread to plop it right down. This works across all sorts of apps. Now, Apple Pencil already leads the industry, the record low 20 millisecond latency. But we've been optimizing and advancing our prediction algorithms, and today we're bringing that latency down to nine milliseconds. So, check this out. Watch as I drag him from the corner of the iPad with my pencil like this. It takes you right into markup, where you can see a screenshot of exactly what you were looking at. But many apps can now support a new full page capture mode, which you select with this button at the top. And here you can see the entire document that you were looking at. You can scroll through it, or use the sidebar on the right there to quickly navigate. And as you would expect, you can mark it up with your pencil, just like this. I'll bet we've got a few Rush fans in the crowd here today, I think, yes. Now, let's turn to the Mac. <laughs> this is the new Mac Pro, a system that offers virtually unlimited possibilities for customization. And key to this is a simple and elegant solution for accessing the internal components and it provides a foundation for modularity and flexibility. So we're using a brand new Intel Xeon processor, and it has up to 28 cores, six channels of super fast ECC memory in 12 DIMM slots, enable an incredible 1.5 terabytes of system memory. 
So we're bringing PCI expansion back to the Mac in a big way. Now, it starts with an industry standard PCI connector. So the slot maintains compatibility with standard cards. But we've added a second connector that allows us to integrate Thunderbolt throughout the entire system and provide a tremendous amount of extra power. In fact, at 500 watts, this module has the same power capacity as the entire previous generation Mac Pro. We call this the Mac Pro Expansion Module, or MPX for short. But for a big upgrade in graphics performance, the Mac Pro can be configured with AMD's Radeon Pro Vega 2. Now, Vega 2 delivers 14 teraflops of graphics compute and 32 gigabytes of memory with an insane one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth. We've built a brand new card that we call Afterburner, and it turns your Mac Pro into a monster of a video editing machine. Afterburner is a hardware accelerator card that's built with an FPGA, which is a programmable ASIC. And this ASIC is capable of processing 6 billion pixels per second. But with Afterburner, the new Mac Pro can play back an incredible three streams of 8K ProRes RAW. <laughs> to seal the thermal system, the beautiful aluminum housing slides over the frame and latches into place. And its unique three-dimensional vents are actually machined on both the internal and external surfaces. The resulting lightweight lattice pattern maximizes airflow while creating an extremely rigid structure. And finally, optional wheels make it easy to move the Mac Pro around your studio. Like the Mac Pro, the design is stunning and every element is built for pros. It's a 32-inch LCD display with over 20 million pixels. And with two 18 pixels per inch, it's a 6K Retina display. It has P3 and true 10-bit color and reference modes built in. We designed the rear lattice pattern to act as a heat sink. And this doubles the surface area, quietly extracting heat from each LED. This display can maintain 1,000 nits of full screen brightness indefinitely. <laughs> and with these capabilities, we have taken this way beyond high dynamic range. This is extreme dynamic range, or XDR. And so we call this display the Pro Display XDR. There's one more feature that does not get much attention on other displays, and that's the stand, which is as pro as the display itself. First, it has an amazing counterbalancing arm that makes the display feel virtually weightless. And it has rotation for portrait mode. Yeah. It's the only display in the industry that delivers every feature on a pro's wish list and more. The new Mac Pro will start at $59.99. The Pro Display XDR will be $49.99 for the display itself. And the nano texture version will be $59.99. The Visa Mount Adapter will be $199, and the Pro Stand, $999. And like the Mac Pro, they'll all be available in the, in the fall. It's Mac OS Catalina. The future of Apple Music, our iTunes is not one app, but three. Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV. Let's turn our attention to podcasts. It brings a dedicated podcast listening experience to the Mac, and it features all the great features you're used to in iOS, like Listen Now, where you can see new episodes and keep track of your listening across all of your devices. Well, now we use machine learning to index the contents of the spoken content of podcasts. So now you can search that content and find the podcast with just a few clicks. Apple TV app, your new home for TV and music on the Mac. Now you'll love having access to Watch Now, including all your great channels like HBO and Showtime, and it has all your purchased movies for iTunes as well. And they've never looked or sounded better because now on recent Macs, we have support for 4K HDR playback on the Mac. We call it Sidecar. Yeah. Now, Mac users love connecting their laptop to an external display so they can spread out their work. But often when they have to leave on the go, well, they gotta leave that display behind. Well, no longer, because now you can use your iPad as a second display for your Mac. Wake up. Voice control is a breakthrough feature that gives you full control of your devices, comma, with just your voice, period. Let's ride this one today. Thumbs up emoji. Click send. Open maps. 
show grid. Long press at 20. The next, I want to turn to a new solution that helps you find your Mac should it ever be lost or stolen. It's called Find My. Now, Find My combines Find My iPhone with Find My Friends, and it's now available on the Mac and iOS devices as well. Next, Activation Lock. We're adding, bringing Activation Lock to your Mac to make it far less attractive to thieves. It's available on all Macs with a T2 security chip, and it works just like on your iPhone and iPad. We've been working on a new project that internally we call Project Catalyst, and it's new technology that lets developers quickly and efficiently create apps for the Mac based on their existing iPad apps. Now, the experience starts right here in Xcode. Just open up your existing iPad project, check the Mac checkbox. And just like that, you'll get a huge head start because Xcode automatically builds in all the fundamental features like cursor controls, window controls, and so forth. And that lets you focus on the finishing touches, maybe a translucent sidebar, pull down menus, or whatever features would make your Mac, your app just great on the Mac. Now, this means one development time, a team for the first time can build a single app that can span all the way from iPhone to iPad to Mac. Of course, the foundation of AR on iOS is ARKit, and ARKit is a major update. I want to focus on two, one area around the improvement of way people are handled in AR scenes, starting with people occlusion. Now, this is insane. What used to require painstaking compositing by hand can now be done in real time. So let's start with the basics. This is a real living, breathing Minecraft world right on your tabletop with redstone circuitry, fireworks, flowing water. You can break anything. You can play with your mobs. And when I look at Lydia, I can see what tool she's holding and I can see her name. And we can see anything she's building. I'm gonna put myself into the build. There I am. Nice, looks just like you. <laughs> Let's use motion capture and make your character wave. Try one wave. Let's try to trigger the double wave. Cool. All of the platforms will be available as a beta today. And the public seed for Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS will be available in July. And of course, all of this great software will be available to our users in the fall. Thank you all for coming and sharing the time with us. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you.